In this age of distance learning and remote teaching, a lot of teachers who haven't had to record videos in order to present lessons to students are having to do that. And so we're getting a lot of questions about what's the best program to record in, what's the best program to edit in. And a lot of teachers are just looking for something really simple and really free. And so you don't necessarily have to download something or learn some fancy Adobe products. Uh, most likely you already have PowerPoint. If you're working on a Windows 10 machine then you also have some simple video editing tools that really all that a teacher generally will need. And so I'm right here in PowerPoint. PowerPoint has two different recording tools in it, both under the recording tab. If you don't have that, don't worry, we're about to show you how to get to that. But there's a record slideshow that is designed to record your existing slideshow. This is designed for, I've already made my PowerPoint, I just need to narrate on top of it. So it's the equivalent of, I'm doing some whole group teaching in the classroom, but my class is not in front of me, so I need to record that for them. So you're going to go through your slides and talk through them like you would in front of a live class. The other is screen recording. So screen recording is designed to use PowerPoint for its recording capabilities, but most of the time you're going to be recording something other than PowerPoint. Now technically you can open PowerPoint twice, use the screen recorder once, and then record the other PowerPoint. That's basically what I'm doing right now is I have PowerPoint open but I'm also recording. But it's most often used to record something else. So again, you're just using PowerPoint for its recording capabilities. So if you don't see those, uh, this is called the ribbon. And if you don't have the recording tab, then we need to add that tab to your ribbon. So if you click on File, go all the way down to the bottom to options we're going to customize your ribbon so here we are in customize ribbon you can add specific commands here but we're again looking to customize the tabs so if you don't see recording up here then scroll down here and put a check mark next to recording I also recommend that you do that for draw if you don't have the draw tab up there so draw has uh, basically if you're familiar with Google products, it has all of Google drawings are all right inside this tab. So you've got lots of different colors of markers and pens and pencils and highlighters and uh, some pretty cool inking tools in here as well. But we're here for recording. And now that we have a recording tab, we're going to do a screen recorder. Once I click on screen recorder, PowerPoint's going to go away because, again, it's designed to use PowerPoint to record something else. So this will just get minimized to the bottom of our screen. So this is designed to go away. Once I click record, this will sort of disappear to the top of the screen. If you want it to stay, just click the pin, and then it won't go anywhere. But most people don't want that showing up throughout the length of their video. So as I said, it's designed to go away. You don't have to record the entire screen. You can select an area. So when you come into the recording interface, already you get the little crosshair. So it's designed exactly for this purpose. So you can choose what part of the screen you're going to record. Again, it doesn't have to be the entire screen. You can choose whether or not to record audio. Now, this is not the computer audio. It will not record computer audio. This is, do you want to narrate or not? If I'm just making uh, something to turn into a GIF, then sometimes I'll turn the audio off. But most of the time, I am narrating, so I leave the microphone on. You can also turn off the pointer. Now, I can still see my pointer, but if I leave that off, then in the final video, nobody will see it. I tend to do tutorials like this. So of course, I want people to see my cursor. That's why it's larger than usual. So I leave that turned on. Once you click record, again, you get a 3, 2, 1, and this will go away. And it does tell you that Windows Shift Q is how you stop recording. But again, if I bring my cursor up to the top of the screen, this will reappear and I can just click stop if I forget the Windows Shift Q. So right now it's recording only what's going on right inside of this space. And now I'm done. So I can, again, go up here and click Stop or Windows Shift Q. My recording stops, and it is placed inside of PowerPoint. Again, Design Ideas pops up here. If your goal was to put this into a PowerPoint and have students access it via the PowerPoint, then as far as the recording is concerned, you're done. Now you just go ahead and add more slides and build out your presentation, in which case maybe you do want to use Design Ideas. But I'm just using... PowerPoint to make the recording. I'm done with that, so now I want to get it out of here. I can go up to the recording tab and see I have different options for what to do with this. Because this is a school account, I have published a stream in addition to these two. If you're just using a personal account, then you won't see published to stream. You'll just see the other export options. But stream, if you're not familiar with that, is your organization, or in my case, my school district's in-house video library. So it's a place for you to 
upload videos, create channels, share with classes, share with your whole district. So it's, it's video organization, storage, and sharing. You can, with one click, just go publish to stream. Or if you have somewhere else you want to place this video, then just right click in the video and do save media as. Now I'm about to do something else with this. So I'm going to put it right on my desktop. I don't store things on my desktop, but again, if I'm about to use it again, it's kind of handy to have it there. And now I'm really done with PowerPoint. We'll just minimize it for now. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open the Photos app. The Photos app has video editing capabilities. And Windows also has this exact same tool right here under Video Editor. So Photos and Video Editor both take you to the exact same program. So we'll click on Video Editor. Let's see, here's Photos, here's Video Editor. So the difference is, if you click on Photos, you start on this tab. And if you click on Video Editor, you start on this tab. So I'm going to create a new video project. So you start a blank project. And this particular project library is empty. Got to give it a name. And now you can see that this is not grayed out. So I can click here to add. I can add video from web. My collection means inside of the Photos app videos have already added there or from this PC and since I just saved it on my desktop I'm going to go to this PC and it was called one video so here's the video that we actually just created but being that it's only 20 seconds long I'm actually going to add a different one you see I now have two videos here so I'm going to grab this one and bring it down and yeah, this one's 2 minutes 42 seconds, so a little bit more to work with. So now that I have video here in my storyboard, I can now work with it. So there's two ways to trim. One is called trim, and the other is split. And trim is designed just to cut the beginning and the end off. So imagine you turned on your recording, and then you're waiting for that little box at the top to go away. So you might want to trim the first couple seconds off. Or at the end, you're done recording and it just shows your mouse going up to click the stop button uh, so you want to trim that off so trim is designed to just kind of take a little bit off the beginning so you can click and drag or you can click play in this short video we're going to show you how to use the audio tool in one note all right and then go to the end and now i've just trimmed you know, a couple seconds off the beginning a couple seconds off the end so i still have about two minutes and 41 seconds here. So next step is, let's say there are some parts in the middle of the video where I'm either waiting for something to slowly load, or I just sort of stumbled through and I said something wrong, and then I did a retake. Uh, I, I like to do all my videos kind of in one take and then come in and edit things out. So I, I messed up for five seconds, paused, regathered my thoughts, and then I said those five seconds again. So uh, that's what we're going to trim out next. So we do that by splitting. So right now I have one 2 minute and 40 second video. If I click split, this lets me choose where to split it. So I'm going to actually cancel this and show you that if I click play, to make note taking more accessible, it plays through in real time. And if I now click the right arrow key, look, I'm at 4.9 seconds. I'm moving by 3 one hundredths of a second. I find if this is a longer video, like if this is a 15 second video, then clicking that right arrow goes by more than a second rather than 3 one hundredths of a second. But if I then click on split, I do get to move 3 one hundredths of a second. So for a video this short, there's no difference whether I click inside of here or out here. The right arrow key moves me the same amount of space. But for longer videos, you can get more precise movement by opening up split. So I can move to the exact spot that I want for the beginning of what I want to cut out. Say done. So now this was all good. And now I have right at the beginning here is what I want to cut out. Now I'm going to click split again. And let's say it was about four seconds that I want to cut out. So let's go right there. Be done. So now here's my little four second clip I want to get rid of. So I'm going to select it and delete it. So I kind of talked through that and made it seem like a lot, but let's show you just how quick this can be. So here's the next spot that I want to delete. Audio button. And wherever my thing and hit stop. So you find that spot where the offending section occurs. Click split and fine tune to get to just the right spot. Click done. Go to that new clip. So right at the beginning is where the offending section is. Click split again remove as much as I need to, and click Done. 
and then delete those two seconds. Okay, so you do that to remove each of those parts that you want to get rid of. When you're done, you can click Finish Video, if that's the only thing you need to do. There are a few simple tools in here. You can add a title slide at the beginning. Uh, you can add text or caption in a few different styles. Uh, you can choose where you want it to appear. Uh, motion allows you to kind of zoom in, kind of the Ken Burns effect, zoom into a different spot on the screen. And filters just has to do with sort of the coloring. And then for speed, you can slow it down or speed it up, and you get you can have that uh, chipmunk voice. Uh, but you can go up to 64 times faster. So one of the uh, use cases I mentioned for splitting and deleting a section is you're waiting a long time for something to load. Well, another idea is you can split split off a section that instead of deleting it, if this is a section where something's loading, then I can instead choose to just speed that part up. And now as this video plays through, when it gets to the part where I'm just waiting for something to download, it'll fast forward through that part. And then when we get back to me showing you something and me talking to you, it goes back to regular speed. So you can change the speed of any section of any clip. So if you need a portion to be faster or slower, then you can use split to separate that part and then change the speed. So not a whole lot of complex editing here. But again, if you're a teacher who's new to recording your lessons and you just want a simple tool to record it, PowerPoint's got that. If you need a simple tool just to, just to cut out and edit your errors, the video editor in Photos has that as well. When you're all done, click Finish Video. And you can choose from three different qualities. Keep in mind that the higher the quality, the larger the file will be, and the larger it will take to process. In this age of distance learning, when we don't know what kind of connections our students have, uh, if you don't have a need for a higher quality, I do recommend you take the lowest quality so that all of your students will be able to download this and play it without more of a demand on their broadband. And it's also more efficient for you because it takes less time to save it. Click export. This is a almost two and a half minutes, and I'm going to do low. So let's see, two and a half minutes. Click export. Throw it right back on my desktop. And of course, fast forwarded that, but that two minute and 19 second video took 45 seconds to process. So I am now done with the video editor. I'm just going to minimize that. I am done with PowerPoint, and now here is my video. So from here, I can move it to wherever it is that I need to distribute it to students. I do still, of course, have the option of uploading it to stream, uh, unlike in PowerPoint where I can just click to go to stream. Now that I have it saved on my desktop, I would go to stream and open it and then upload the video so I can share it with students or colleagues or anyone in my district via stream that way. So again, this video was showing you how to use things most likely already in your possession if you have PowerPoint on a Windows 10 device. So use PowerPoint to record your lesson. Use the Photos video editor app to clean it up and make it ready to distribute to your students. So I hope you found this video to be helpful. Uh, I do have a channel you can follow with similar videos for using Microsoft tools in education. I also have written a book on using Microsoft tools in the classroom, which you can find on Amazon and it's listed in the comments down below. And if you prefer written directions, I do also have a blog with similar content, which you can find at theother-it.com. Thanks for watching.